Hey, thanks for coming to this Head First Fishing video. I'm Captain Joe, and I want to make you a better fisherman. Today we're going to talk about redfish in Tampa Bay. We're going to talk about bull redfish in Tampa Bay. Big redfish are really popular to catch, and for good reason. They get in big schools, they eat aggressively, and they fight like hell. They're awesome, really cool, beautiful fish. And the adult fish, they get into these big congregations at certain times of the year, and that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. Before we kick this off, I wanna thank our sponsors, St. Pete Fishing Outfitters, Tampa Fishing Outfitters, and Tarpon Fishing Outfitters. They're the place to get fitted to fish. Be sure you mention Head First Fishing when you visit, and you'll get a little discount at checkout. Also, big thanks to the Pike Consulting Group. If you're a business owner in construction or manufacturing, you need to call Mitchell at Pike Group for your free safety consultation. Let's kick this video off. Big redfish, you wanna catch them. Everybody wants to catch them, they're awesome. So how do you find these big schools of redfish? These are the breeder fish. These are the fish that have generally moved off the flats. They're not living in super shallow water anymore. For the most part, this is a deeper water dwelling fish. So redfish go through a life cycle that starts off the coast, after the fish spawn, their fertilized eggs come in with the tide and these little fish end up in your backwaters and your estuaries, on the flats, in the mangroves, in the seagrass, and that's where they start their life. Most redfish people catch are not sexually mature. Once redfish exceed their slot limit, which in Florida is typically 18 to 27 inches, once they're beyond that, they sort of start to morph into a different animal. They start to get in bigger and bigger schools and move to deeper water. Finding schools of big mature redfish is really exciting. And sometimes you can find them on the flats, but once they do get to their biggest size, generally they're gonna be out in deeper water at the mouths of different bays or off the beach. And this is a really exciting event when you can find these big schools of redfish. Fortunately, in the information age, we can hop on the internet and we can look up reports on when these big schools of redfish get together. Francois, can you pull that report up for me? Bubble 07, on the job! Red drum spawning movements off Tampa Bay. A team of 10 biologists and three commercial fishermen worked together to capture and process over 1,000 live adult redfish on the deck of a commercial purse boat. Each fish is quickly measured, assessed for gender, and a small section of his tail fin is removed for genetic analysis before being released alive. So they did a multi-year study and they observed and caught and tagged and uh, took samples from thousands of fish. It's really cool that they did this and this is giving us anglers a lot of information. So in short, redfish gather in big schools in late summer and fall on the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And it's probably similar in other areas of the Southeast, probably similar times of year, uh, but they often create these giant golden vortexes on the surface. Just scrolling right here, you can see a sample of that. That is a lot of redfish. That's a ton of redfish. And I have seen schools like that before. Not quite, I wouldn't say quite this dense, but I've seen redfish going by in schools that would look like they just stretch for a mile. So again, they did a three-year study starting in 2012, and they used traditional fishing methods uh, with spotter planes and the purse scenes. That's an image from a plane right there. And emerging scientific techniques, acoustic telemetry, and genetic analysis to estimate the red drum spawning population size in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, as well as determine habitat use and site fidelity associated with reproduction. Site fidelity, I believe it means are these redfish coming back to the same areas year after year? How many of these fish are coming back to the same place to spawn? Researchers conducted aerial surveys from Tampa Bay to Charlotte Harbor during the three spawning seasons to identify red drum aggregation locations. Working cooperatively with local commercial purse scene fishermen and a spotter plane, biologists caught, sampled, and released thousands of fish. Large sample sizes were needed to genetically characterize many individual fish for recapture rates and calculate population size. The fish were also measured for length, assessed for gender, and females had samples taken of their ovaries so that reproductive state could be determined. All red drum were then released. This is really important. 100 of these captured red drum were implanted with acoustic tags, which emitted sounds and that are detected by underwater receivers. 
100 of these captured red drum were implanted with acoustic tags to track fish movements associated with spawning in nearshore waters between Tampa Bay and Charlotte Harbor. Researchers deployed 88 underwater receivers to monitor these fish, recording the date and time that a tagged fish swam within range of the receiver and the depth that it was at and the temperature of the water, allowing scientists to better understand individual spawning behavior. This is really interesting. The research showed red drum aggregations occurred in nearshore waters in August and can continue through mid-November. The number of aggregations varied annually. In 2012, six aggregations were observed. 2013, there were 17 sighted. And in 2014, six aggregations. No aggregations were sighted off Charlotte Harbor during 2012 sampling season, possibly due to red tide occurrence. In 13 and 14, aggregations were detected through most of the coastal area survey. Scientists took biological and genetic samples from 1,800 fish in 2012. They had three aggregations, 3,400 fish in 2013, six aggregations, and 3,781 fish in 2014 from five aggregations. Acoustic telemetry data indicated that most fish use a range larger than the area between Tampa Bay and Charlotte Harbor. Spawning fidelity was relatively high, with 60% of the fish detected in 2012 returning to the Tampa Bay spawning site in 2013. Acoustic data is currently being analyzed for fine-scale behavior patterns associated with spawning as well as site fidelity in 2014 and 2015. This data will be integrated with the genetic tag recapture data to estimate spawning population size. Personally, I've witnessed quite a few of these big schools of redfish come by the Gulf Shores Pier when I was a kid. These huge wads of redfish would come by and they would attack all the menhaden, they would attack all the elwives, the scale sardines, the white bait, they would eat the mullet, whatever was in their path, they mowed it down. And you could throw any lure you want, a spoon, a jig, a surface lure, hell, almost a bear hook, and they would eat it. I think one of the big keys to finding these fish when they are around is probably looking for the birds. If you can find those big diving birds that are circling around these big schools of fish, that's gonna help you out a lot. Hey, thanks for pulling that up, Francois. You ready to go hook some big redfish? Let's go! Hey, if you've ever seen one of these massive schools of redfish, tell me your story in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. You can also leave comments on how I can improve these videos. I hope you take a chance this fall at catching some big redfish. Definitely do what you can, but just scour the beaches and scour the passes, see what activity you can find. You just might strike gold or copper, or red. And now it's time for expert advice. If you're worried about hitting marine mammals while out boating, there's a simple trick you can do that'll solve all your problems. Simply trim up your motor until your hull starts slapping the water. The dolphins will take this as a warning from a friend and swim away. I'm Captain Joe, hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up button, and I'll see you later. At Pike Consulting Group, we're changing the culture of safety.